Hello and welcome to my new moon in Aries number two tarot reading energy reading for April of 2023. We started the new moon in Aries at zero degrees on the spring equinox last month in March and now we complete the Aries energy at 29 degrees of Aries here on April what is it the 20th. It has been quite a month and in the middle of that, we had Pluto move into Aquarius. So yeah, <laughs> and now the new moon in Aries is square Pluto. So yeah, <laughs> if you aren't feeling this. Oh, and did we say total solar eclipse? Yeah, <laughs> there is so much energy that is moving at this time and we can feel it and sink into it and be holding it and it feels absolutely overwhelming and we always have the choice to transmute the energy, to move, alchemize, shift what we're feeling and create something magnificent from the depths of the struggle and the pain. And my hope, my intention for this tarot reading is that we tap into that energy of transformation, that we tap into the energy of full cycle, full circle. We start at zero, we go all the way through the entire process and we emerge in a new beginning, a new beginning after the first beginning a month ago. So let us play. <laughs> I'm going to pull three cards, one for the individual now, one for the collective now, and one for the highest possibilities for this next lunar cycle that we're beginning. And then I will move into an extended reading where we'll go in deeper with a different card deck. And then I will create a new moon meditation and a new moon manifestation circle. So I believe at the new moon, it is the best time to set intentions. And when we claim them on paper, when we write them down, when we voice them to other people and we're witnessed, we amplify the power of our intentions. And so stuff starts to happen. Magic happens. Things are manifested. And everyone is witnessing that that happens. And you're just blown away. <laughs> this happens every month. I have people write them down at my new moon circle, which I'm hosting tomorrow here in Cincinnati. We write them down and then the next month someone will come back and be like, oh my God, it happened exactly like that. And someone else will say, I know, and then this and this. And it moves faster. The manifestations move faster when we witness them and we support each other and we write them on paper. So if you decide you want to watch the extended video, do the new moon meditation, you get to send me your intentions. And when you do that, I will handwrite them into the manifestation circle tomorrow night or over this weekend. And then I'll burn it on Monday and release it to the stars. All kinds of fun, <laughs> all kinds of magic that is happening over here. Okay, last month, I just feel like I should name this because... We're talking about the arc, the full completion of the cycle. Last month on the first new moon in Aries, which if you haven't watched that and you hear me say this and you're like, wait, I need to stop, go back, watch that video, and then come back and watch this video. Trust if that impulse is calling you. What we looked at in the last video a month ago was this feeling of, um, it was the five of pentacles card, and it's the woman where she's just hunched over and she's looking inside but right next to her is this huge door with a big key she could open the door at any time she could get up and go over and get the key at any time but she's in this position of like no we could read that story or we could say the whole thing is just a beautiful theatrical act that we're witnessing and here's this woman who's harnessing all of the potential magic by sitting and creating the suspense and the drama you don't know what she's going to do next is she going to stand up and go open the door is she going to go get the key or is she going to jump up and burst into dance we don't know because it's all a stage and you're the one on the stage and you get to determine what kind of experience you create and so the reading was this um, activation this encouragement to really be aware of this time that you have on our planet and what are you doing with it and what stage do you want to be on and how do you want to use your voice in the guided meditation it was one of the most beautiful ones I've ever created it was a visualization with this music from um, in by East Forest and it was doorway one doorway two doorway three doorway four and the music created this backdrop to this incredible transmission of energy from source that said, what happens at doorway one? If you open the door, now what? What about doorway two? And so I describe what I feel the energy is of each of those moments in our human journeys of opening the doors. 
It was amazing. So there's wisdom and information that your soul will show you if you choose to tap into what we looked at, what we looked at a month ago. And here we are, the end of the cycle. And we're about to create and um, create and set intentions for the next beginning. So new moon in Aries, total solar eclipse. What's the energy now? And what are we going to be seeding as we move forward? Let's find out. I am going to use, oh my gosh, this song. I have my playlist going. I'll put the link to it on the webpage. Um, it's called Unconditional Love. It's on my Spotify account. You can listen to it anytime. It's so good. But the song is called um, Lullaby. Lullaby of, Lullaby for a Little Spoon. And it's just about this person who's usually in hiding, emerging, coming forward into the fullness of who they are. And you can feel it in the music. It's like they're dancing in the background and ta-da, here they are. Such a great song. So all that energy is infused into this video as I record it for you. Okay, we are going to use Light Sears Tarot for this YouTube public video. And then I will have some other decks we use for the extended video, which is private. Meaning you got to exchange for it because it's deeper, <laughs> more magical, more mystical, because you just want to know what the next thing is going to be. <laughs> All right. But this, this video is my gift to you. So here we are. We are going to look at the individual now, the collective now, and then the highest possibilities for this next lunar cycle. So as we sit here and I'm shuffling, so I'm like, what's the energy? What? When is the right moment that I want to stop the shuffle and pull the cards? Isn't that the most magical feeling when you're like, is it now? Is it now when I'm going to pull the card? Kind of like that woman in the image that I used in last month's video. Is it now that she's going to stand up and go over and get the key and open the door? Is it now that she's going to break into dance? When will it be? <laughs> uh, it's so good. Okay. Individual now. <sighs> Come on. Yeah, so powerful. Collective now. I keep hitting the mic. Sorry if it's making noise. Collective now. Yeah, this is absolutely what is happening. And we'll go into each one a little more in depth. And then the highest possibilities. We just had this card, didn't we? Justice? Maybe I had it in another reading. The Justice card. Oh, I know. It was for the um, Infinite Embodiment Attunement Meditation. We just had this. Highest possibilities for the next lunar cycle. Beautiful. All right, let's dive in. Let's see what there is to know. Okay, individual now. So I'm going to put it in front of me so you can see it. Take a look and see what you notice as you look at this card. What jumps out at you? What colors do you see? What do you believe to be true? Look at the character, the expression on the character's face. What do you notice? And often when we see a card, even if we've seen it before, each time we look at it in a new energy, the card gives us new information and it's going to, something different will jump out from the card. And so each time you see it, you'll get a new message because you're coming to it with a different intention. You're coming to it in a different frequency. The collective energy of consciousness, the astrology is different. And so every card has layers and layers of information if you're open to it. What I notice in this moment for the individual now more than anything else is the top part of the stairway that leads up into all of the light and the bliss and the magic and the one doorway that's open at the very, 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 very top. Do you see that? It's just like this starburst of fireworks and magic. Like that is where my attention is drawn. Many times before, what I usually see is the character, the person at the bottom of the stairs. And I just resonate with, I think it's a guy. So I would say he, I resonate with his joy, his pure excitement of he knows the secret. He knows the magic. He sees the whole cosmic joke in everything that is happening everywhere. <laughs> and he's the gatekeeper to the stairs. And so he just laughs at it all. And, you know, ha, 
<laughs> he's just in the the bliss of the experience that's usually what I see first in this card and today it's the top doorway at the top of the stairs I believe that's probably because I was just talking about doorways and how the doorways in the meditation last month were which one do we open and what does each one offer us and so there's I'm going to try bringing in closer to see if you can see there is so much uh, sacred geometry and imagery at the top. Can you see? The light and shadow from outside is a little different this morning because it's so early. I feel like the stairs lead to a constellation. They lead into this cosmic grid. And what is the grid about? We don't know. We don't know because we're not at the top of the stairs. This card puts us here at the bottom of the stairs looking up. And so if this is the individual now energy. What I feel as the message, the biggest message I could offer from this is the doors open. The door to everything you desire, you dream. The, the road, the map is already outlined for you. You climb the stairs and you will get to the door of the thing that you desire. You choose to walk up the stairs and you will walk right into that door and through it and into whatever the next portal looks like for you. And so maybe this represents cosmic consciousness, awareness, enlightenment. Maybe it's a, an ethereal thing. Like, okay, I, I sit here in this individual now moment in the new moon in Aries with a total solar eclipse happening, all this energy available to me. Aries is about especially beginnings, leaping into what you know and trust to be true, like taking the action, not sitting back waiting. I feel like this card is saying, what is that? If it's consciousness, walk up the stairs and the door is already open to your next level of consciousness. The next evolution of who you are here to be as a soul in a human body awaits you. Just sit down. Close your eyes, <laughs> laugh if you need to, <laughs> meditate, and your spirit, your soul will take you up the stairs and into those magical portals. So we could see this card from the consciousness level, the etheric level. We could also see it from the physical level, the, <clears throat> the manifested human reality level, So, which he offers because he seems like a very physical human being. So what I get when I look at this card from that perspective is sit down, individual now, sit down, meditate, close your eyes, harness your mind, your body, your spirit into this moment, like bring all of your focus here. And I'm guessing this is what the new moon meditation will be about. Bring all of your energy here and then visualize whatever it is that you're wanting to open the doorway to next. So... What would a good example be? Health. Let's say it's about your health. And so you see this person's body and you're like, I wish my body could sit in that position with arms and legs and all comfortable on the floor and no support at the back. Looks like this one's you know, pretty fit and healthy. I wish I had that, that type of a human body. Well, sit down, meditate, visualize, see this portal opening of you shifting your human body to the experience you want it to have. You create the physical structure of your body, your thoughts, what you feed yourself with food, what you put into your body with liquid, the environment you surround yourself with, the stress level you put on your body, the amount of exercise. You, we all know, we all know <laughs> what it takes to really have our bodies be optimally healthy. And yet, we don't do it. And often it's the habits, it's the beliefs, it's the thoughts, it's the routines that we don't even question. So sit down and meditate and visualize. See your optimal, my ears are ringing, that's so cool. See your optimal healthy form up here in this star dust constellation of magic. Picture, picture the version of you that you want to be the form you desire to in embody, to inhabit. See that right here in the doorway. Visualize it. 
And then imagine that version of you walks down the stairs and starts merging with the human you that's sitting here in the human form. So maybe the first few months you do this, this is a long-term thing. This is a beginning of a cycle. <laughs> it's not you do it today and you wake up tomorrow and voila. <laughs> it's not that. This is New Moon in Aries beginning of a cycle amplified by a total solar eclipse. So you visualize your optimal healthy form and you bring that healthy form down and you start merging the two. Optimal health here in this human body. What happens? And you do this every day, every single day, every single day. And you think about that version of you all day long and you act in accordance with that version of you all day long. Very quickly, it takes 21 days to create a new habit. Very quickly, you're moving more, you're eating better, you're drinking more water, you're less stressed, you're inspired, invigorated. There is a whole new version of you that is inhabiting your human body and starting to do stuff inside. And when you allow that version of you to do stuff inside, your physical form is going to change. It has to. Your energy inside is different. Your thoughts are different. Your desires, your dreams are different. The DNA is going to start synchronizing with the energy, but it's energy first, physical second. Let's say it's a relationship or a job or a new home that you want to be in. You don't like the current place where you're living or your bank account. <laughs> this is such a big one for everyone. <laughs> I'm saying all these things for myself, by the way, as much as for you. My body is not optimally where I want it to be. My bank account is not. My business is not. There's huge potential in all of those, but I'm laughing at myself down here at the bottom going, yeah, not there yet. <laughs> not living that optimal state yet. Close, but not, not quite. So I'm going to sit and meditate and visualize all the things that I choose to bring into my human reality and walk them down the stairs and into my human life. So you see your optimal relationship. You see who you are in your optimal relationship. You see your optimal job. You see who you are when you're doing your optimal job. What do you do all day? Where do you sit? What do you um, do with your hands, your body? How does your time feel like it flows? Like what is that reality? And you visualize it in this cosmic stardust magic. And then you walk that version of you down into this human body and you allow that version of you to move. You might have six or seven or ten versions of you that are being manifested up here in this portal that are all walking down and maybe one day of the week you focus on bank account and one day like who's the version of you that sits at your computer or walks into the bank and writes the big check for cash and receives it into your your hands or who's the version of you that has all these accounts open my mentor said this and I loved it she's like open little accounts of places where you would like to go shop and start putting into your shopping cart the things that you would like to have Create a, a, a little virtual shopping mall of your favorite things. And then as your money comes in and everything else is paid and you're feeling abundant, you have these little wish areas that you can go put some money into and then receive the thing that you desire. Like you can play in your imagination up here and bring it down. I can also hear my guide saying no more than 30 minutes a day <laughs> sitting here or else then you're using it as an excuse, right? It's the, the secret as a bypass. I'll just sit and visualize all day long, but I won't do anything about it. No, we live in a human reality. We live in a 3D world. So you spend your time, a little bit of it, visualizing, you walk that into you and then this human gets up and does some things. This human receives inspiration from this cosmic version of you and acts, moves, does. This is New Moon in Aries. You do. You get up and you, you go to the place to apply for the job. You get up and you make the phone call to the person who you want to connect with who's going to lead to the next partnership. You get up and you walk. <laughs> you walk around the neighborhood. If it's too far, you walk to the end of the driveway and back and you do that every day and eventually you go a little bit down the street. This is how I start my run in 
April when it's finally warm enough to go outside and run. I run, walk, a little loop, <laughs> and then my legs get a little stronger. And then the next week, I run a little more and I keep the same loop. And within a month, I'm running the whole loop and I've added another little extra leg, like another little side neighborhood. And then by the end of the summer, I'm running 45 minutes the whole time through this big, huge, beautiful loop every morning. It takes time. It takes, this is the physical reality that we're still embodying. It takes time and it takes density. It takes practice. It takes creating new routines and, and changing the thoughts so the physical version of us becomes something different, something more that we actually desire. And then one day you'll sit here at the bottom of the stairs, exactly the version of you you've always wanted to be, and you'll just be laughing at yourself like, why did I not do this sooner? <laughs> Why? Why didn't I remember earlier? Why didn't I learn about this years ago? It's just part of the journey. It's all part of the fun of being a soul in a human body. That's what this one is laughing about. This one's like, yeah, I know. I could just walk up the stairs and the human version of me, this way, the human version of me could open this door and walk, or not even open because it's already open, could walk through this door and merge with the constellation and the stars and return to stardust like that. Like, I could just go. But I choose to be here. I choose to be in the human body. And so I'm going to bring these manifested, awesome, cosmic versions of my soul, my spirit, down into my human body, and we're all going to do a little bit more. <laughs> we're going to do a little better while we're here in the human reality and make it the best it could be. And that's the joke. This one's like, I already know all this. I already know how to do all this. I already know the stairs are there. I already know the path is available. I already know the door's open and all the light and cosmos is waiting for me. But my back is to it. Because <laughs> I prefer to think I know everything here in the human form. <sighs> that was a beautiful <laughs> transmission of energy about the individual now, huh? I'm telling you, the fire happening with Aries and the total solar eclipse and it being the second new moon in Aries, the fire is <laughs> off the charts. All right, collective now. What do you notice when you look at this card? I love how the music got, it's a sahas, sahasarara. It's like a deep cosmos music as this card gets put in front of you. What do you notice? What jumps out at you? What does it bring up in you as you see what she's doing? So when I described the card for the first round of Aries, New Moon in Aries, I talked about how there were two stories that could be overlaid. There's one, the woman is sad and depressed and she doesn't see the key to the door. The other is she knows she's on a big stage and she's about to do a ta-da kind of moment. This card, it feels the same to me. There's two layers. There's two potential stories that I associate with this card when I look at it. One is, oh no, this poor woman. All the crows, the two crows are trying to eat her and she has to fight them off. And she looks like she's out in the desert all by herself and she's lonely and she can't see because she's got a blindfold on. And how is she going to survive? This poor woman, it just looks so intense. Collectively, that is absolutely a true story that many humans are playing out. The world is a shit show. It's a little intense. We don't know what we're doing. It feels like we're being attacked we feel like we're all by ourselves. There's no one coming to help and save us. The world is drying up. It's climate crisis. Like this card feels, that story feels very true when we apply it to humanity and earth. Here's another potential story for you. These beautiful crows brought her the next level of her lesson. Can she do all the things she already knows how to do, but do it blindfolded. So the crows very carefully put the blindfold in place, and then they stay right above her just in case she needs their help to take the blindfold off. 
And so she lifts her hands up in position to begin the jujitsu moves that she's been practicing on her own in front of a mirror. She's out in the desert, and there's a whole crowd of people sitting on the ground waiting to cheer her on. There's buckets of water everywhere if she gets too thirsty. And she slowly harnesses all of her attention and her energy inside of her third eye. She puts her hands in position. She feels all of the strength coalesce right at the center of her heart chakra. She runs that energy up to her third eye and she can visualize exactly the people who are going to be coming towards her if she was going to do a jujitsu match with somebody else. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing jujitsu, <laughs> karate, whatever, whatever it is that you would like to do. <laughs> and <laughs> she goes for it. She moves her hand. She chops the air. She sees a vir virtual reality. Maybe it's a virtual reality mask they put on. She's fighting the baddest of the bad monsters. <laughs> she chops them down with one hand. The crowd goes crazy. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Everything's a story. Everything is a story. What story do you want to tell? This is the collective consciousness right now. This is the collective humanity. Which storyline are you picking? Are you the victim? Or are you the empowered individual who owns her body, owns her story, owns her reality, and is creating the next level of her evolution? Which one? Because whichever one you pick, you're going to reinforce with the thoughts, you're going to reinforce with your choices and your behaviors, and you're going to solidify that storyline and make it more and more real and more and more real, and it's going to take you further down whichever path you decide to go. If you're in the victim path, you're going to find every single reason to validate why you are a victim and everyone else is a victim and everything is being done to us and done to you. And there's no one who's going to ever like save themselves because we're all in this victimized energy. And I'm over-exaggerating right now for emphasis. Or you see the power and the strength in every soul who chose to come into a human body on this planet. You see every human as powerful, as wise, as badass, courageous, as being here doing it, putting their huge infinite soul into a tiny body <laughs> that they have to manage, feed and drink and sleep. Like how profoundly courageous is that to be a soul in a human body? At this time when we're all, so many of us, all wanting to expand and evolve in, in whatever ways we're doing. Or we're so overwhelmed by it that we're hibernating and numb and trying to not feel because it's just too intense. You're still here. Like, wow. <laughs> You're still here. Because it's really easy to go, I'm out of here. I'm out of here and I'm returning back to that light because... I know what that is, and this is not, <laughs> not that. <laughs> this is like, ah, there's so much happening. And it's amplified right now with Pluto in Aquarius for this little three-month window that I talked about in the last video. If you haven't watched it yet, I did a video, um, Guys Love Podcast number 448, an announcement. And I talk about, for a long time in the video, I talk about what is the shift with Pluto moving into Aquarius? What does it look like for this little three-month window that we're in? March, April, the end of March, April, May, and the beginning of June. What is, what is being anchored into our consciousness right now that we are going to be playing with for the next 20 years as Pluto moves into Aquarius permanently, permanently, you know, for a while next January? What's happening now? What does it mean? And so that video gives you a lot of information about the energetics of what we're experiencing and what's possible. Pluto and Aquarius is emphasizing, amplifying our belief in victimization or our belief in empowerment. And maybe we bounce back and forth easily between the two, but often I feel like we believe one way and then we reinforce it and reinforce it and reinforce it. And so Pluto is going to amplify that. If you feel like you're a victim, the intensity of this little three-month window of time and everything that happens now is going to amplify that feeling that you're out of control and other people have power over you and you don't get to be sovereign in your own reality. 
if you don't believe that, if you see the story like I do, which is, oh my God, she is, she's so strong. She can do it blindfolded. <laughs> There's not a lot I can do blindfolded. Like that's pretty awesome. If you can see that woman and that man and that child and that experience as an opportunity for more empowerment, you'll amplify that. And you'll see the power each one has everywhere you look. And you'll see the power in yourself. Because if you see it in everyone else, it must be mirroring what you are yourself. And so there's this beautiful strengthening of your own knowing of empowerment. And then everything matches that and reinforces that. And your whole story of reality shifts. Pluto and Aquarius. So good. <laughs> Um, Apana is the song that just started, which is breath. Oh, so beautiful. This card is also the card. I feel like I have to name it because it, I've seen this card so many times. This card is um, the card that I pulled when I created my community space called the gym, the energy gym it used to be. Now it's the gym. It's an online community, and we play with all these ideas of mind, body, soul, and how to harmonize them. But this is the card for the specific class that I call Deepening Connections. And we meet every week on Fridays at 1130 Eastern for an hour from all around the places that we live, all the different cities that we live. And we share what's happening. What, what is our current reality? Are we feeling empowered? Or are we feeling victimized? And how are we going to shift the story to the narrative we'd prefer to have? And so every week we show up and we do this beautiful work and we deepen our connections with ourselves and with other people. So if anything I'm saying here resonates with you, I encourage you to go to my website to look under, this is always the thing, which room did I put it in? <laughs> which room did I put the gym in? I think it's under our return home and then it's I am all and it's the gym. I believe you can also find it on my 2023 events under my event calendar. It's, the gem is in there. Or just send me a message and I'll send you the link. But this is a powerful community space. And yeah. And it's not the only class I have, by the way. I have the one on Fridays. I have a men's gym for just the men who want to have these kinds of conversations. And then I have um, receiving more, which is about manifesting every other Monday night. And I have building our empires for those of us who are growing huge empires of magic in this place that we call earth. And so that's one Wednesday night a month at 7 p.m. Eastern. The gym's pretty cool. And if you want all of it, there's an option for that too. Okay, highest, highest possibilities for the next lunar cycle. What do you notice? It's hard to see where the card is. There you go. What do you notice about this card? What is most obvious to you as you look at it? Just for fun, I'm going to turn it upside down. <laughs> it's like the upside down world, isn't it? <laughs> I was on a FaceTime call with my son this morning. He's like, why are you upside down? I'm like, I don't know. It must be stranger things. You've gone into a different portal <laughs> dimension. Of consciousness. I'm right side up. So are you on my side? I don't know what's happening on your side. <laughs> Maybe he was showing me the justice card. Justice, um, how would I describe this? Again, there's layers to it. You can see this card in terms of the law and the the balance of the scales in the human reality. Like I do this, you do this. You have this wrong, I have this experience of uh, atonement or not atonement. You know what I'm saying. You do this and you get punished. And then I get this because you did this. And so there's this constant trying to keep it equal. Maybe it's within your own self. Like I invest this amount of time and I receive this much back for it. Or I pay this much for my home, my car, my whatever, and I receive this in exchange for that. And so there's this sort of mental understanding of balance and justice. When I see this card, I think of the cosmic experience, the other layer, which is this could be source. This could be your higher self. This could be your guides, your spiritual guides, your guardian angels, the universe. It's like the universe sits here and the universe holds the scales. 
And the universe is balancing karma, balancing the contracts and the power dynamics and the giving and receiving. I feel like this card speaks very much to the higher order of everyone together, not just what serves you individually, what serves me individually. This is what serves the order of the universe. What serves the order of the cycles of beginning and ending that we're discussing here with New Moon in Aries? What's justice from that level? And I feel like that takes justice out of our hands. I don't have to, let's say someone does something wrong to you. I mean, truly wrong. Like they disrespect you or they steal from you or they betray you. It's a true wrong in the sense of we don't do that to each other as humans. Why would you do that? And there's a human need to have justice, to have revenge. Usually justice to me means revenge. To have justice, make it right, balance it out, retribution, punishment for the thing that you did wrong. When we don't get that, when we have the betrayal and then we don't get the revenge that we want and justice isn't happening, there's this resentment or it feels like a it's like our hearts get harder and tighter and we pull our energy in but with it we pull in all the anger that we wanted to send out to the world we pull in all of the revenge that we wanted to blast out and hurt someone with when we're truly wronged and we don't get the right that we need for that wrong i feel like many people we harness all of that energy and then it festers inside of us. And we're waiting. We're trying to wait for the world or karma to make it right. And I think that can make us sick. It can make us miss the beauty of this. It keeps us down here with our back to the whole thing going, nope, nope, it wasn't right then. It wasn't made right then. It's never going to be right. And so we lock ourselves into these human stories that are so painful and so dense. And we forget all of this. I believe if we can trust that there's a reason always, a higher order, a, a universal judge who is watching the whole thing play out, not just this lifetime, but all lifetimes, not just this one dynamic we have with this one person who betrayed us, but the dynamic that person had when they were a child where they were betrayed. And when they were in a relationship and they got shit all over and now they carry their wounding. And so this higher order, it sees, it sees the entire tapestry of everything. And if we can surrender that this one knows the perfection of all of it, we'll manage the equaling, the righting of the wrongs will balance the energy in a way that everyone gets exactly what they need. And so can we focus on our own experience instead of retribution for someone else? Can we focus on our own experience and find peace and forgiveness within ourselves? Which it really isn't as hard as it sounds. It's, it's like a turning, instead of all that focus and resentment and frustration and disappointment being directed at the one who didn't get the right for the wrong that they did. Instead of all that energy going there, if we can bring this energy into ourselves, this looking within, and really start to uncover the stories underneath the wrong, why would we choose that person? that would end up wronging us? Why would we create, because everything is a co-creation, why would we create that um, story, that experience that we then had to live? Was there a lesson there for us? Did we contribute something to the wound of that person that they brought from way back? For example, betrayal. If we feel like we're betrayed by someone, did we know somewhere in our friendship or relationship with that person that they had been betrayed before and that they carried a wound of betrayal? If we do, then can we find the compassion and forgiveness that we had for that person 
when we first were friends with them and loved them? Can we find the connection and have compassion for them to bring grace into the experience that was created? Can we open our hearts within ourselves and go, oh, like that hurt. That hurt. That was a difficult, painful experience. And I called it into my reality to teach me something. Am I learning the thing that it came here to teach me? And as I learn whatever that lesson is, can I still work on keeping my heart open? Because that experience could make me stronger, could make me more empowered in my own discernment, in my own trust that I can navigate anything and always be okay, that I can always keep my heart open. When we find that strength, my ears are ringing again. When we, it's like it went from that side to that side. When we find that strength within ourselves and we keep our heart open, now we're going to magnetize someone towards us who's a match to that stronger heart, who's a match to that learned wisdom. And so that next relationship can come in and we don't have to work on the betrayal lesson. We've learned that one. We can work on the next level of lesson in relationship. And so we evolve. And we now are playing in this level of depth and connection. And yes, there may be another lesson coming. We may be hurt again, but we already know we're going to be okay. And so if there's another next story that gets created and experience and they go this way and we go this way, okay, can we sit, feel whatever we need to feel, find the wisdom, anchor it into our heart space and keep our heart open? Because now the next level of relationship is going to come in. And so we're walking, we're, we're, it's almost like if you could see that there's a nut, like this person, this character is actually halfway up the staircase. We don't see that in this card, but what if, what if there's another like 500 steps <laughs> down here and every time this one learns something, he climbs another few steps and he sits down and puts his pillow and laughs at all the things that he's been learning on all the steps below and he waits. And then someone who's on their ladder of all their steps is going to be over here and go, hey, you want to be in relationship? You want to talk? You want to connect? You want to collaborate? <laughs> and so now these two can connect at this level of staircase. And the ones that we were in relationship with down here are connecting with people over here. And it's not it's not like I'm better than someone because I'm here on the staircase and they're here. It's not that we're better than anybody. It's we came here as souls in human bodies to learn things. And everyone has different learnings on their own staircase. And everyone has different experiences that we'll co-create. So we just respect. We respect the power of each soul in a human body to have exactly the experience that they called in. And we keep our hearts open and we treat each other with kindness and compassion. We have grace for ourselves and we have grace for those around us. And then we have these moments where we just get to laugh at the entire structure of it all. <laughs> and we'll call in the next cosmic version of ourselves to come down and to harmonize with the DNA of who we are right now and <laughs> manifest whatever it is that we want to create next. It's all in how we tell the story and then how we choose to live it and reinforce it and expand it. So at this new moon in Aries, be very aware of what you are seeding. Be very aware of the intentions and the thoughts that you are planting. And if you need support, do the meditation because it's going to be gorgeous. It's going to be gorgeous. All right. I wish you the most amazing next month ahead. Let us create so much magic and we'll come back in the new moon in Taurus. So much love.